In this video, I'm going to take a look at an important application of electrochemical cells. I'm going to look at storage cells, but we're more familiar with these as batteries. So we'll just start with some key points about storage cells. So the first thing to say is they utilize electrochemical reactions from two half cells, which are stored within the cell. And the point of that is to generate a voltage. There are two types of storage cells. So we've got primary cells. These are non-rechargeable. So this image here is of a classic AA or AAA battery. That's a primary cell. The other type of cell is the secondary cell. So like the one in your mobile phone. So that's a lithium ion battery. And the difference here is these are rechargeable. Now, whether you're talking about primary or secondary storage cells, the chemistry behind them is exactly the same. So if we start with the primary storage cells, so an example is the zinc manganese dioxide storage cell, which we would commonly refer to as an alkaline battery. So you can see I've got the two half equations for the two half cells. You'd always be supplied with these, so don't think you've got to know these off by heart and we've also got the standard electrode potential values for the two half cells. So the first thing we'll do is look at how these compare with each other. So you can see this one here is more positive than this one, which means that this half equation will run in the forwards direction because it's more able, this is more able to accept electrons than the zinc oxide. So if that's running in the forwards direction, this is therefore going to have to run in reverse and obviously you can see the zinc's going to give up its electrons in the process. So now we need to work out what the overall equation would be for the cell when it operates, when it discharges. So all we need to do is write, add this equation running left to right to this equation running right to left. And you can see we've got two electrons in each one, so we don't need to multiply any of them out. So you can see on the screen now I've got the overall equation. There's a bit of cancelling we need to do now to simplify this. So we're looking for like terms left and right. So you can see we've got H2O, one of each on the left and the right, so they'll cancel. Got two electrons left and right, so they cancel. And we've got the two hydroxide ions, which we can cancel out. And I forgot to mention there, that's the reference to alkaline batteries. The fact that there's hydroxide ions present inside that storage cell. So that means the equation simplifies down to what's on the screen now. So if we think about the voltage of this, the E cell, all we need to do is take the more positive standard electrode potential and subtract from that the less positive one. So that's coming out with an E cell or a voltage for the cell of 1.43 volts. And the only other thing to say really here is which will be the positive terminal, which will be the negative. And so the more positive standard electrode potential will be the positive pole for the battery. So that's going to be your positive electrode and that's going to be your negative one. Remember on the first slide we said that primary cells, primary storage cells aren't rechargeable. So basically this reaction here is not reversible. We can't make it go in the opposite direction. So moving on to secondary storage cells, so that's the lithium ion battery that we've got in our mobile phones. That's an example of a secondary storage cell. Do exactly the same as before. Remember the chemistry is the same. So we've got two half cells with different standard electrode potentials. So if we look at how the standard electrode potentials compare, you see that's the more positive one. So this will run left to right. This will run right to left. So when you add these two half equations together, we get that. So we'll cancel that down now. So we can see we've got um, lithium ions left and right, and we've got an electron left and right, which means that the overall reaction looks like that. So if we just look at what the voltage will be, most positive minus least gives us an E cell or a voltage of 4.2 volts. In terms of positive and negative um, poles of the battery, we've got this is going to be the positive end because obviously it's more positive standard electrode potential. That's the negative end. So the only other thing to say really here is, well, why is this a rechargeable battery? It's because this equation is reversible. So if we apply an external electrical supply to this reaction, 
it'll force it to go in the opposite direction and you'll just make back up your um, reactants and then obviously when you stop charging it runs in its natural direction.